happy Mother's Day to those who are mothers, and those who have mothers, and those who miss mothers. We're just so glad to be together at First Church West Springfield together. My name is Pastor Chantel Washington, and we are engaged in the sixth Sunday of Easter. And so we are so glad to be here together. We're glad to have our guest musician, Alexis Nelson. She is my firstborn, and, um, and we're just so glad to have her with us today. I thank you again for wearing your face mask. Um, I remind you to keep them covering your nose and your mouths. Um, when we're participating in worship, we will unmask for those parts of worship, and then we will mask up but uh, we're just so thankful to each and every one of you for putting the safety of our community um, as a priority and keeping your mouth and your nose covered during our service. Those of you who are virtual, we're glad to have you with us as well. We know that um, there are so many ways that you could worship, and so worshiping with us today is good for us all. So thank you. Uh, I hope you have seen the main newsletter. It is beautiful. If you haven't seen it, it's not too late. Please take a look at it. There are some great dates in there um, and some birthdays and events that are happening. Lastly, you should know that no matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Let's go. Please stand us your name. Sing to the Lord a new song. We've come to make a joyful noise to the Lord. Rejoice for God who brings your steadfast love and faithful goodness. So bring your heart to the Lord. Now we'll join in and sing to this. Don't sit sure.
our prayer of confession. Just as you created the world out of nothing, Lord, create a clean heart out of our nothingness. You pay for our sins with your own death. Restore our lives and the fellowship we once shared together. You don't condemn us and you don't disown us. We are your children forever. But we take all the blame. We own our sin. We are the one who broke fellowship with you and we are crushed over the way we treated you in your name. Lord, root out the darkness and light upon our lives, our lives with your holy presence. Help us understand what went wrong. Show us how our destructive patterns first began. What did we allow to become more important than loving and honoring you? Why did we seek satisfaction in others or other things than you? You are the only one who provides all of our needs. You fill up our souls with deep down joy and peace beyond all understanding. And for that, Lord, we come and pray the prayer the way Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness of sins to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you to do his will, and keep you in eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So the scripture reading for today is from Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord and his son, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout out for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of singing, with trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord, the King. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world, and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with dignity.
chance at that when we leave with the kids, so we want to see a little more dancing, a little louder, and a lot of maracas. This morning we have special flowers here given today in honor of Mother's Day. And I want to ask the kids, but the grown-ups can help them, do you see these flowers as all the same or as different? Do they all look the same? Or do they look different? Different. different. We have geraniums, we have impatiens, and we have um, this flower, which we're trying to figure out what it is, but we think it's a, some kind of spring flowering bum. But they were pretty, so we got them. Um, geraniums, impatience, and maybe spring mums. In what ways are all these flowers the same? We said they were different, but is there a way that they're all the same? They're blooming. They're in spring colors. They need water. Sunlight. Okay. Will all of them be used to brighten the day of a person who receives one? Think so? Can all of them be loved no matter what type or color they are? I think you know where we're going with this. <laughs> it reminds me of our Bible story from the book of Acts today. Some of the followers of Jesus thought that God's love and Holy Spirit was just for some people and not for everyone. Just like these flowers are different from each other, but can all be part of a beautiful garden, people are different, but all are loved by God. People of all ages, tongues, and races can work to love and serve God and others. At the end of worship, these flowers will be going out to homes to add the blessings of this special day. We are asking for volunteers to deliver the plants that are going to homes of homebound folks in West Springfield. Miss Annie is here. She will be at the entrance when worship ends to help people find bulletins on the radiator that will go with the address, um, go with each plant. So if you are able to take a plant on your way home, they're all local, and um, I know many of you have done that before, and Annie is going to assist with that. Other flower pots have been bought by people whose names are on the back of the bulletin, and you may choose one to bring home and enjoy. Let's pray. Most loving God, we thank you for your love and for loving all of us equally. Thank you for the many gifts you have given us and for the gift of your Holy Spirit in our lives. Help us to see that we are all loved by you. Amen. So as the kids and Miss April and I go out, we are going to try again with the maracas and the singing.
done for us. We bring these gifts of offerings from our hearts and they translate into time, talent, and treasure. And we exchange them and we receive them and we give them back. And so as we honor this time, this time of offering, um, those of you who have dropped them off at the church during the week, or dropped something in the mailbox, or pour it up and put it in the offering plate, we honor the gifts that you bring, for they are a portion of what God has given to us. And so we say thank you to God for these things. And let us shout in joy with gratitude. Please stand for the gospel. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Christ all creatures here below. Praise Holy Spirit the Comforter. One God triune whom we adore. Please stay standing. God, please take our gifts and weave a song of healing for the broken, of nourishment for the hungry, of hope for those in despair, and peace for those torn by violence. We sing our praises as we offer our treasures as well as our hearts to you. In Jesus' name. Please be seated. I'm going to read to you the scripture that Diana was talking about from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 44 through 48. While Peter was standing, while Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. You know, there's so much talk and emphasis in our country about boundaries and differences and race and gender identity and equality. And these are things that we talk about as humans. But we serve a God. We are created by God who crosses all of those boundaries. God moves right over and past them all and is the example for us. God moved heaven and earth to reach Cornelius in the story. He wanted Peter to pay attention to the cultural differences and the religious differences, but not in a way to keep people out but in a way to make sure that everyone was included. God does not discriminate. He doesn't hold it against us if we're a certain religion or practice a, a certain denomination. God wants us to be in communion with him or her. God wants us to be more interested in our attitudes than our differences. In the story, Peter had the task to point out that
that the prejudice, the bias, the old way of thinking that people who were Jewish had, had to come to an end. It had to stop. When the people who were not Jewish received the Holy Spirit, that was the sign. That's what Peter was highlighting. Hey, God means all of us. And so when we look at the fact that God accepts people from every nation, people who honor, people who respect God and God's way, and people who do the right thing. If you become part of God's family, you're a part of God's family. Have you ever heard the, the, the phrase, blood is thicker than water? Mm -hmm. So, some people recognize that they're not related by blood, but they're still really close, right? I mean, we have all kinds of blended families where blood relation is not the foundation of the relationship. And with God, we don't have to all be blood-related to be family. And we certainly all have God in us, and that is thicker than blood. The fact that we are all connected by the Spirit of God is thicker than blood and water. And it is so intricately weaved within us if we access it, if we allow ourselves to show those parts of God that are inside of us for others to see. And then even when we don't show others, God knows, God can hear and feel what happens inside of us. Peter was a representative of the church and God used Peter to execute hospitality. Now, we're no stranger to hospitality here at First Church or the United Church of Christ. Hospitality is a big deal for us, right? It's hard to have the hospitality that we would like to have uh, when we're not having coffee hour because fellowship and food and nice warm drinks or nice cool drinks are a great asset to hospitality, but they're not the only ways that hospitality happens. And so when we use hospitality, like we wear our name tags, we greet one another, we do an elbow, um, we do a fist pump, you know, there's all these ways where we greet one another um, as signs of being hospitable, of welcoming and inclusive. And that's what we do with each other because God is in us and God is a hospitable God. God wants us to feel him. God wants us to let others see the God in us. Jesus stayed with the Samaritans for two days after and he enjoyed their hospitality. Peter enjoyed the hospitality in Joppa when the three men asked him to visit Cornelius in Caesarea. There are so many times where the church has opportunities to be hospitable. We give in missions. We have, actually this church has a bin outside of the church door where we leave water, juice boxes, snacks, PPE, hand sanitizer, and masks, in case someone just needs it. They can ride by the church or walk by the church and grab those things because we want to show the God in us as a community. And so as we continue to do that, we have to remember that the gospel is something we can also be hospitable about. The gospel is something for everyone. The gospel is something that we can share verbally, in writing, in action. 
to show God's love for ourselves and for others. Sometimes we just have to reconfigure in our own minds when we think that someone is so different that they should not or they could not be part of God's family. If we think about people who have done things that have been harmful to others, it gets hard sometimes. I remember there was a time where I was asked to speak at a rally that was, it was a prayer vigil, and people were there because they had family members who were victims of crimes. And I had been asked as a prison chaplain to go there and pray for people, but also to speak on behalf of criminals. And that was hard. Because I was talking to people who had lost loved ones or who had been harmed by others. But I had to bring out that those others, when they repent and they join God's family, they too are part of God's family. And that's not so easy, especially if you have experienced some harm or trauma in your life. But we have to remember that Jesus talked about people in prison. Jesus talked about people who had ailments and infirmities. And Jesus did not leave them out. Jesus, that's the great thing about the United Church of Christ. Some of the fa my favorite sayings come from the United Church of Christ. And one of the first experiences that I had with the United Church of Christ was a big banner on the wall and it said, Jesus didn't reject people and neither do we. And I thought that was so profound. It was so real. And then I realized the people at that church were actually living it out. They were doing it. I mean, people would come from the outside, homeless people, wayward people, people with mental challenges, and they didn't reject the people. They, they lived that manner. And that's what we have to do. The other saying that Jesus, um, that the other saying that the United Church of Christ has that really warms my heart is that there's a, there's a banner right out here in our hallway. It says, be the church. And not only does it say be the church, it says, protect the environment, care for the poor, forgive others, reject racism, fight for the powerless, share earthly and spiritual resources, embrace diversity, love God, and enjoy this life. That's beautiful. That's hospitable. That's showing what God can be in us to the world. And then lastly, I want to point out the other saying that I love about the United Church of Christ is that God is still speaking. I don't know if you've ever seen the comma. Have you ever seen people um, in, oh wait, do I have commas on today? This comma stands for God is still speaking, comma, not period. God's not done speaking. God's still speaking, and there's more to be heard, and there's more for us to hear, and there's more to be done. For everyone, for us to cross boundaries and reach people who feel like they're forgotten, to reach people who feel like they're not worth being reached, to reach people who are right there before us that we think are fine and are not only with them. We have these opportunities. This is our chance to redefine faith and to show it in action. Faith in action. We have this holistic approach in the Southern New England United Church of Christ where we're 
using the new terminologies uh, for race relations. We have a new uh, Minister of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And that used to be Minister of Race Relations. But the Southern New England Conference of the United Church of Christ has realized that we need a more holistic approach. We need to look at justice and identity in a very uh, inclusive way. And when we talk about inclusivity, we're talking about justice for race, sure. But we're also talking about justice for the environment, justice for LGBTQ plus, plus A, yes, the LGBTQ community, and justice for them. We're also talking about wellness, justice, taking care of ourselves and one another, being safe. We have to be aware that it is our responsibility to encompass, to embrace all of people who are created by God. And as I close, I want you to recall that we have so many avenues to reach people. We have more than we did when I was born in the 70s. We didn't have email like we do now. We didn't have social media. We didn't have, well, maybe some of the more affluent people had cell phones, but they had wires. We didn't have wireless cell phones, right? And uh, we didn't have Zoom, and we didn't have uh, Facebook. We didn't have those things. But now we have so many more avenues to reach people that we can do more than what we do. It's not a matter of age. It's almost not a matter of finances. And it sometimes is a matter of time. But we can find time. We can pull together and find time to reach out to one another. This is a perfect example that we will be taking people flowers to their homes in honor of Mother's Day. Some people will actually get birthday cards on the deliveries. People who are homebound and have birthdays in May will also receive greeting cards. So we're doing it, church. We just have to continue to do it. And I'm here to encourage you today to make sure that you do so in your homes as well, in your workplaces as well in your schools as well, in your communities. Show the hospitable side of God that resides in you each and every chance you get. For those chances may be the one thing that helps someone else get closer to God. You may be the only God they see that day. Amen. Well, now here, Selection. It will be shown on screen. Amazing grace.
give you one more verse. Let us pray. <clears throat> Creator, you made the world in beauty and restore all things in glory through the victory of Jesus Christ. We pray that wherever your image is still disfigured by poverty, sickness, selfishness, war, and greed, the new creation in Jesus Christ may appear in justice, love, and peace. To the glory of your name, your glory is revealed in our love of both friend and enemy, in communities transformed by justice and compassion, and in the healing of all that is broken. Your son remained with his disciples after his resurrection, teaching them to love all people as neighbors. As his disciples in this age, we offer our prayers on behalf of the universe in which we are privileged to live and our neighbors with whom we share it. We're so glad that you invite us to bring our doubts and fears, our joys and concerns, our petitions and praise, and offer them for the earth and all its creatures. Receive these prayers of God and transform us through them that we may have eyes to see and hearts to understand not only what you do on our behalf, but what you call us to do, so that your realm will become in fruition to all. Guide us in the path of discipleship, so that as you have blessed us, we may be a blessing for others, bringing the promise of the kingdom near by our words and our deeds. Amen. Please stand for the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his spirit to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his smile upon you and give you grace and peace. Please remain seated. So please take your seats and remain seated until the post has completed.